Hello, Commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Journey Across the Galaxy. We are continuing on our way to Beagle Point, having crossed most of uh, most of the way there at this point. I mean, kind of. <laughs> We've already gone all the way from the bubble through the Galactic Center, and we're working our way towards Beagle Point. It's about 30,000 uh, light years away. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get off the ground and get on our way to the next uh, waypoint. Today's topic will be uh, mostly just kind of a personal update because uh, I don't really have anything else to talk about and it's the only other major thing going on in my life right now. So <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, but before we do that, I have to uh, do my obligatory recap of what we do in these episodes for all the new the new video, <laughs> new players, new videos. Like you try to say all the wrong things except for new viewers. Uh, who come in because most of the people who come back are oh most of the people who come back are uh, coming in for the first or most of the people here are coming in for the first time and have no idea what's going on so our journey for this is mostly focused on leveling up our exobiology as well as scanning high value planets so we're going to hop into each system try to remember to check the system map to see if anybody has explored it already then we're going to check the full spectrum system scanner to see if there are any high value planets in the system and then if there are few enough bodies we will do a full-on scan to see if there are any biological signatures that will help us make a lot of money and also rank up our exobiology skill so now that you know the premise, you're caught up to speed with everybody who's been following along the whole time. Uh, yeah, my, my topic for today is going to be mostly just, you know, talking about what's going on with my moving situation right now. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen other videos where I've been talking about my work situation and all of that, but, uh, you know, part of what's been causing that work situation to be what it is is just the fact that I've been living in Mexico for the last year and I can't work here, so... <laughs> And uh, finding a remote job has been very difficult. I haven't, I've applied to over a thousand jobs and just wasn't able to find anything. Nobody, nobody seemed interested. I don't know why. I've been doing office work for 20 years and computer, it's all been computer related. It just, it's, I don't know, there's just something out there that's blocking me from getting to that. But anyways, outside of that, uh, we are moving back to the United States very soon, back to San Diego. And uh, we're gonna be moving back into uh, my travel trailer. I'm very excited about that. I did live in my travel trailer for a couple of years, and uh, I was quite happy to be in it. Um, too many bodies here for us to scan. I'm looking for 15-ish or less, depending on how I feel at the time. Uh, so, you know, I've spent a couple of years in my travel trailer. If you've, you've, you've heard all of this before, if you've watched any of my, uh, my trucking video stuff, I've talked about it a couple of times, but uh, I have to assume that enough of you have no idea, so I'm going to talk about it here. Um, I, I have a 34-foot uh, Winnebago travel trailer. It's very nice-ish, you know, for a travel trailer. <laughs> but uh, I was very comfortable in it, uh, at least when I was living by myself. Uh, now I'm married, and uh, we're going to be moving in it together. And I don't foresee it being that big of an issue. It's just going to be the two of us. So, you know, it's not like we're going to be hurting for space or anything. And a 34-foot travel trailer is pretty big. So we're moving back, and I'm going to be volunteering with the Park Service to uh, so that we can have a long-term space while we kind of figure out getting back into the United States and figuring out what we're doing and, you know, ideally trying to build this channel up into something that actually pays us, pays me enough so that she can stop working and we can go traveling. That's the dream. That's where we're trying to get to. But obviously, you know, the channel actually has to grow big enough for me to do that. <laughs> so... I've been pushing hard to try to get subscribers in so I can uh, fully monetize the channel and get uh, to the point where I can start getting some of that ad revenue. I do have a few uh, paid subscribers, and I'm pretty sure all of you who are uh, paid members of the channel watch are paid members because of this series, so I want to make sure I say here, thank you very much for you guys who are supporting the channel. You are a critical step in helping me to get to where I can do this full time and hopefully get on the road with my wife and go see the country the way we want to. Uh, but, you know... I'm still a long way off from that, and uh, so it's all about trying to acquire more and more subscribers so that I can get to the point where the ad revenue is increasing and the channel memberships are increasing. And then, you know, maybe some people end up buying some things using the link in my description for some of the gear that I use, and that could help out a little bit. Kind of just hoping I can have a bunch of different sources of revenue that are all coming in and it ends up adding up to be enough to where I could actually, you know, do this full time and actually be getting paid for it. Because I've been doing this full time since I've been living in Mexico, but it wasn't because 
it was my first choice of thing to do full time. It was because I, I didn't have anything else to do. And I'm like, well, I got to do something productive. Let me work on my channel, I guess. <laughs> so the hard work has appeared to be paying off. Uh, we're within spitting distance of full on monetization for the channel. I'm super excited about that. It's gonna be very nice to actually have some kind of hopefully consistent income uh, outside of just, you know, waiting for hoping for people to decide they want to support the channel in, you know, some people will, some people won't. Uh, you know, we've, we've gotten used to the whole free content thing. Um, you know, n nothing's ever really free. You're you're selling yourself, you're selling your data basically when you're signing up for any kind of free service. No, you, nobody's giving away anything for free. They're getting something out of you. But uh, we've gotten used to not having to pay out of pocket at least for content. So, you know, it's it's hard to convince people to say, oh yeah, I like you, I really like your content. Let me, let me, let me shell out a couple of bucks a month for that. You know, and it's really it's really difficult. Um, it's really difficult to overcome that when you pretty much have to give away your content for free if you want anybody to ever find you. So it's just it's one of those things that's kind of difficult because you have you have to kind of break through that initial barrier of being completely unknown and then finding enough people who are interested in what you do to gather some kind of a following and then growing that following. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to be on this planet for a little bit. That's probably going to be it for this episode, to be perfectly honest with you, because that's a lot. Five. Okay. Uh, let's head over there. I'm definitely going after that. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, so yeah. Um, that's kind of like my, my, it's kind of a half-ass plan though because you know it all relies on you know YouTube becoming the thing that works for me and while I am experiencing some pretty decent growth and I'm, I'm growing faster than I kind of thought that I would you no know, it, it still takes a while to build a channel so I gotta figure out things to do in the meantime while I'm waiting for the channel to grow to the point where it becomes my thing now that being said I do have plans to start doing a uh, traveling U uh, a YouTube travel channel, uh, probably gonna call it Gunthrex Travels, um, once we actually get on the road. Um, so I'm really hoping that you know a lot of you guys will be interested in that, and I can bring some of my subscriber base over to that and turn that into a second revenue stream because you guys will watch my gaming stuff. Because I'll still make gaming stuff. I'll have my my gaming rig and the RV and all of that, and publish videos and continue doing that. But then when we go out to look at look at cool stuff that we want to go see we'll make sure that we record it and i'll try to present it in a professional way so that you guys can you know get some kind of entertainment out of it but you know i that's kind of my plan my wife is into photography so you know i'm kind of hoping that she'll be able to get a really good camera and be able to take some really good pictures and start a blog and maybe figure out a way to monetize that so we're just we're really looking at a bunch of different ways to try to get to where we can do a bunch of things that we're personally actually interested in instead of just going to do some grindy job and then, you know, figure out ways to monetize those. And that would be super amazing and awesome. I think that's the dream that pretty much everybody has. You know, take the things that you enjoy doing and figure out a way to make them make you, have them make you money. But, you know, it's also extremely difficult to figure out ways that, ways to do that that will actually work. Like you can always, you know, everybody has a blog, everybody has a channel, everybody has all of this. You, you gotta be good enough and that's the hard part. <laughs> Stratum, Tussock, and Osseus. Fungoida, we're probably not gonna go after because those are very hard to get to. Looks like these three are all about the same. So we'll leave that up and then we'll go ahead and get the Super Cruise turned off, get ourselves moving in towards the planet and go see what we can find. So realistically, we'll probably get four out of the five, depending on how hard it is to get to the to some of the other ones. Uh, the Fungoida is always up in the mountains and very difficult to reach. But depending on how much time we have, we may try to get it done. We are gonna, we're pro almost certainly gonna end the episode on this planet because of how many biological signatures there are. <coughs> Excuse me, the amount of time it's gonna take us to go through all of this is going to be significant. So I don't foresee us continuing on our journey very very far or i don't i don't i don't see us continuing on our journey after this we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be scanning for a minute so we'll go into this crater here because usually craters are a very good spot to find biological sources actually i'm gonna go to this crater here because it's near the mountains and maybe or it's at least near what looks like mountains 
May... Well, I don't know. There's a crater there. That's weird. Maybe we'll be able to find some fungoida that's easy to find... It's as easy to land near. But then again, I don't even know... I don't even know. I don't know. We'll go into this. We'll go into this crater here. We'll see if there's there should be with five biological signatures. There should be something in the craters, and then we'll 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 take it from there. Obviously, we're not going to know until we get down here what the situation is. So we just need to get close enough to start rendering some ground-based objects, and then hopefully they're going to turn into things that we can scan. What we got here. All right. So there's some stuff there. So now the question is, can we land over here? Is this a flat enough area here to land in? So that we can go get that. It looks like it should be, but then again, the ground radar, or the ground hologram, or whatever it is you want to call this here, is not necessarily the most easy thing, the most accurate thing to use when it comes to trying to figure out if you can actually land on something. So anyways, yeah, that's, that's kind of like, since I couldn't think of anything else, I figured I'd give you guys an update on my thought process and kind of what's going on. Oh, there's grass. There's grassy ones here, too. Okay. Well, that makes it easy. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's, sometimes it's hard to come up with topics to talk about because I'm not much of a talker, really. So I kind of have to force myself to, uh, you know, be, be talkative and come up with things to talk about. All right. What do we got here? Some kind of lime? Looks like lime colored something. The tussucker. Oh, the stratum. Stratum paleus lime. Okay, very nice. I really wish that they would update this so that you could have multiple sample containers instead of forcing us to have to go take off and find three different samples and completely waste this one here. That's so annoying. Ooh, I wonder if that one's far enough away. We'll try. Too far away. I don't think it's far enough, but we'll try. Come on. Blue, I think, means that we've already seen it. I don't think we can get this one. Yeah, all right. So we have to take off and go find another one. Get ourselves up into the ship and looking off, looking for, looking for another sample. <clears throat> Still have a lot of work to get done in my RV. I wish I had done a little bit more when I was living in it because you know there, there's there's a bunch of different things that need to be done to it uh, before it's super ready to go. I have an air conditioner mod that I need to do. There's a there's this. Uh, there's videos floating around on the internet that show you how to redirect your overhead air conditioner in your RV and make it more make it more uh, effic efficient and powerful and uh, that kind of thing because you're not losing half of your cooling to uh, inefficiencies and things like that. So it's basically it's, a, it's some foam that you put up in the air conditioner space and it forces your air conditioning into the ducts rather than just allowing you to dump it out, which, you know, I would prefer it to go that way anyways. It's supposed to be much quieter as well, so... Okay, can we land here? All right, there we go, right there. Uh, so I want to get that done. And then uh, one of the worst things that happened was uh, I was using my water tank... Um, even though I was hooked up to city water, I would I would regularly use my water tank because the water pump in my RV tended to be a fair bit stronger than the water pressure where I was. So, you know, I, so I would go back and forth between using the city water because I got lazy and didn't want to keep filling up my water tank. But a lot of the times I would use my water tank. And for whatever reason, filling it up ended up causing the wood support that was holding it to break. And it fell out through... It almost fell out through the bottom of the trailer. The only reason it didn't fall out was because... Um, the bottom of the trailer has a cover under on it, uh, which it almost ripped off, but because it had, you know, a full 400, 400 pounds of water in it, 50 gallon tank, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, you know, fortunately it didn't actually fall out, but I had to do, I had to do a bunch of work to get the water out and do, it was just, it was a big deal. And ever since then, I've been trying to figure out a really good way of um, remounting it in there so that it can, 
you know, be full of water and not have a problem. Is that a... That looks like a biological thing. Okay, we're going to stop here on this one on the off chance that it's far enough away. I'll get back to the water tank in a second. Just landing, i got to find a landing spot here. Okay. Can I land? All right. So, you know, at first, right now it has, um, it has some um, cargo straps holding it up. <laughs> Because I need I needed something that was going to be strong enough to hold up that much weight. Uh, so the the cargo straps are kind of strapped to the struts that were originally holding up the wood. Let's see. Can I see anything else nearby? Any grass or anything? Or is that that's the bacteria? I'm not really trying to get bacteria yet. We'll do that one last. All right, I was hoping we could just find something here without having to go back up into the uh, back up into the air, but as usual, there's never anything nearby when I'm when it's convenient. Uh, so yeah, I just I needed something that was strong enough to hold up that much water, and it, it boggles my mind because the way they designed it, if it broke, like I didn't I, I didn't I I was living in a trailer park basically where I couldn't come and go as I please, so I didn't. I, it, it's never been like actually used as an RV. I lived in it, so it was just sitting there. Like it went straight from the dealership to the uh, it went straight from the dealership to the parking spot that it sat in for two years, and it broke in that. So it's not like it had water in it when I was driving around, and then you know the up and down, the banging and all that stuff broke it. No, it it like it never went anywhere with water in it. <laughs> so I don't know how they expected that to survive. You know, even being halfway full of water. Uh, you know, if it broke, if it broke with a full tank just sitting there, that just boggles my mind that that's, that they, that they thought that that was going to work. I don't understand that. So I'm, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, that's yet another, that's another thing that I need to, you know, figure out and get, get, get fixed. And I don't know. I'm thinking I'm probably just going to just take the water tank out, put it in the back of my truck and then just pump into my city water supply from my truck. That way I never have to worry about the tank being an issue. It'll be safe in, in the back of my truck. And, uh, you know, I won't, I, I won't really have to worry too much about freezing because I'm not going anywhere where it's going to get that cold anyways. I, I don't like being cold and I would never go somewhere where it snows and actually stay the night there. That's <laughs> not happening. Uh, gotta get far enough away that we can find some of the grass and actually have some diversity. So... Are you gonna be able to find some over here? See, see what I mean? Like, look at this. We have to go. We have to be basically right on top of the grass to be able to to be able to see it. But fortunately, you can actually land on the areas where the grass is. So if I can remember to do that, um, we could probably just get out of the ship and have it. Yeah, like right, right here. <laughs> just grab it real fast. Uh, outside the window. Okay. So, you know, just regular RV things that you have to deal with. If you buy, if you buy a travel, if you buy any kind of an RV, and especially if you buy it brand new, you're going to have issues. Um, you know, you might be able to get past that if you buy a used one and the person who bought it fixed all of the problems. But unfortunately, a lot of times, a lot of times people don't. They just let, the, they just let things break and then they sell it. They sell it. So, you know, ooh, that didn't work out very well. Can you land? There we go. Um, so you know, buying an RV is one of the is buying an RV is very much like buying a boat. You're gonna have things that you're gonna have to fix. There's gonna be things you have to maintain, and you're just gonna have to live with the fact that uh, you know it's a process. And I'm fine with that, I guess. It's just some of the design decisions that were. It's, it's like a lot of things, whether it's video games or let's see. Let me just take a second to see if maybe some of these uh, whatever the weird. The weird shaped things were are nearby because if I can just grab one while we're here instead of having to take off again, that would be nice. But I don't see any, so we're gonna have to pick up and go back the other way because I know I saw some back behind us there. Um, I was talking about fixing up our boats and all this. I, I, I design decisions. I the decisions that people make when they design things. I understand that a lot of it is just based off of trying to come out. With the cheapest product to make in the quickest product in the, in the quickest fashion, so that you can churn out a bunch of them and make all the all the money that you can. But at the same time, it's like 
why don't you guys actually put some effort into you know making sure that you're putting a product I, I miss the days when people were more concerned about reputation and making sure that people saw their product brand as something that was worth you know paying attention to we, we've gotten away from that for a long time I and mean, it's been a very long time since most companies give a crap about what you think of them they just they're just trying to get a quick buck off of you and then like and I guess even the RV the RV industry is probably a really good place to be like that because you know how often do people buy RVs or how often do and how often does an individual buy an RV you know what I mean like they're gonna buy once and if they don't like it oh well that's we got we got our one sale out of them <laughs> I, I, I guess I guess I, I, me personally, if I was running a business, as much as it would be nice to squeeze every dollar out of these units, and I understand that it adds up, but at the same time, it's like, I, I would want people to look at my brand and be like, yeah, man, they're, it's a good quality brand at a reasonable price. You know, they're not charging an arm and a leg for it, but you're still getting a good product. And I wish more companies thought that way. They used to think that way. Like before my time, most companies really thought that way. They wanted to get, they wanted to earn your loyalty. But those days seem to just be long gone. All right, so there's some more over there that I can kind of see. I think we could probably get those over there. So let's get, uh, let's get back into our ship here, fly over there as quick as we can. And then after that, we may try to do the bacteria. I did see some as we were kind of landing over by one. I remember, you, you guys remember I said something about it. Okay, I think I said I saw some over here, right? Hmm, I'm not convinced that those are far enough away, so we'll go to this one here. Okay, can we land here? Oh, yep, we can. I can get right on that spot. All right. I think this is number two for this. We'll find one more and then do the biology. Is this number two or number three? I've, I've lost track already. All right. We'll grab this guy. So we've already gotten all the grass. We've already gotten all of the um, stratum. So we just need to get these last spiralis or whatever they're called. These are the, are these the osseum? Osseum spiralis? Is that what it's called? I don't. I don't know. I, my 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 memory is terrible. All right, what do we got here? Osseus spiralis indigo. So we need one more, and then we can look for the bacteria. I don't know that I'm gonna bother even trying to find the fungoida because it's just it's such a pain to find. It's such a pain to find a landing spot for them. I mean, maybe off camera I might, but I'm certainly not gonna try to do it with you know seven minutes left. So yeah, that's a life update. I don't know how I, I could continue to do life updates as we go, but realistically, you know, my life is pretty boring and simple and I don't, you know, it's not until we get to the point where I'm actually able to travel and go visit places, you know, I'm not really going to have much to talk about. And then even then we're going to be trying to start a travel channel if we do that. So you guys will be able to see it over there. I don't really want to ruin it for you that way either. So <laughs> Personal life is not really going to be much of a, too much of a topic if I can avoid it. Uh, let's see. Where are... I just need one more. I just need one more. Come on. There we go. Okay, come on. Nope. Oh, there we go. Get ourselves finished with this one, and then we'll see if we can find the bacteria, and that'll probably be it. We'll fly around for a minute. If I don't see any bacteria, if they're too hard to spot, we're just going to go ahead and call it. We're already at 24 minutes, and, uh, you know, the bacteria aren't all that. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and just call it for the video, and then I can just find the rest of it on my own, because, you know, the bacteria is going to be boring, and the fungoid is going to take forever if I just end up deciding to do it. So anyways, hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button so the YouTube algorithm knows that you did and sends the video out to as many people as possible. We're trying to grow this channel and only you guys can help us to do that.
Subscribe if you're not already subscribed so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your video feed and you'll be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members do get early access to all of my content in addition to other perks depending on the tier that you choose. So be sure to check, uh, be sure to click that join button and check out the perks that are available and decide if any of those are right for you. Your support is greatly appreciated and is a key step in turning this into a professional channel so I can do it full time. Again, thank you very much for, for your time. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the flight and I will see you for the next one.